Hey, Jason here from Theme Punch. So this is part two of our primer series, which will discuss the basics of Essential Grid. In this video, we'll go over some of the layout options for the grid. So this is our grid that we ended up with from the first video. And right now, this is an even grid, so all of the items are the same exact size. Now the images for these grid items are not actually the same size and some of them are different aspect ratios. So when you have an even grid, in order to make the images all the same size, sometimes they'll be stretched and cropped. So depending on the images that you use, you may want to adjust the size ratio. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here's our grid that we created and if we click settings and then head over to grid settings we can see that the grid layout is even and the items ratio is 4 by 3. So these items are all sized to be 4 by 3 right now. So let's change it to 4 by 2 and see what that looks like. So here you can see all of our items are now sized 4 by 2. So this doesn't look that great with this particular skin. So let's go ahead and change the skin real quick. And we can change it back to Washington. And here we have our Washington skin. And this is a much better skin for this particular items ratio. So the grid is automatically responsive. And what that means is the grid will automatically respond to the container that it's placed in in the page. So for the 2015 theme, this container is actually fairly small. And if we resize the page here, we can see that the grid items will also adjust and resize. Now depending on the screen size, you can also decide how many columns that you want to show per screen size. And this is particularly useful for mobile devices. So if we head back to Essential Grid, in the grid settings, if we scroll to columns, you can see right now it's all set to 2. But we could go ahead and change this to 3 for the desktop columns and then 2 for tablet landscape and regular tablet and then we can set it to 1 for mobile. So generally this will be tablet landscape will be uh, 1024 pixels a tablet portrait will be around 768 pixels mobile landscape will be around 640 pixels and mobile portrait will be around 360 pixels. So if we save that we can see for our regular desktop view we have three columns and then if we resize the page The moment we jump into tablet view, the grid automatically changes to two columns. And if we keep resizing down, as soon as we get to smartphone view, it changes to one column. So let's go ahead and look at the difference between an even grid and a masonry grid. So in the grid settings, if we just choose masonry for the grid layout and then choose save grid, this is what our grid will look like. So the main difference between an even grid and a masonry grid is that an even grid has a fixed items ratio. So if you remember before we set it to 4 by 3 and then we tried 4 by 2 but for a masonry grid, the ratio will automatically be determined 
based on the image's original size ratio. So because our images are not all the same exact size, some of them look like they're maybe 5 by 3, this one looks like it's 4 by 3. The item will always be resized based on the image's original size ratio. So that's why you end up having sort of an uneven grid here, or also known as a masonry grid. And with a masonry grid, there are some specific skins that are pretty cool for when this option is used. So let's go ahead and choose one of those masonry skins. If we head back to our grid, then click Skins, and then the masonry filter, we can see that there are a lot of cool masonry skins that we can choose from. There's actually two pages of them. Now a lot of the masonry grid skins are set up to pull in things like cat list and number of comments and additional things that you would normally find in a post. So if you remember from our first video we ended up with a custom grid where we added items from the WordPress media gallery. And we can actually add things like categories, date, and additional information to our custom grid. But for this example, let's just go ahead and switch over to a post-based grid, as that will have all of the information we need right from the post itself. So I'm going to select post, post types, post, and then post categories, save the grid, and now when we choose skins, and we head over to masonry, if we choose Garfield, and then save the grid, this is what that skin would look like. So you can see, because we're using the 2015 theme here, and there's not a lot of space for the content area, this would probably look better with two columns. So let's go ahead and set that up. In the grid settings, we can change 3 to 2 for our desktop views. And that's looking much better. So let's try another skin. This time I'm going to select, I think, Cleveland. And let's see what that would look like. And this is kind of a cooler look for this particular theme, I think. So next, let's explore what the cobbles layout is. First, let's head back to our skins and choose Washington. And then back in the grid settings, let's select cobbles for the grid layout. And when cobbles are used, it's sort of the same thing as an even grid, except we have the option to designate two columns or two rows or more for any specific grid item. So there are two ways that we can assign cobbles patterns to a grid item. The first way is if you scroll down to the editor preview, you can click edit post meta, and here in the cobbles element size, we can choose a specific cobbles pattern. So let's go ahead and choose um, width 2, height 1. Save the post meta. And here we can see that this item now takes up two columns, while the other items only take up one column. And another way that we can do this is if we just change this back to 1, 1. is we can choose a cobbles pattern. So if we set this to on and then select a cobbles pattern, we can assign our first item to always have 
let's say two by one and maybe our second item will always have let's say uh, one by two and we can add another one by two and then possibly another well let's make this one by one one by one and how about we'll end with a two by one so if we save that grid this is what our cobbles pattern will look like so you can see that it's only showing three items so let's go ahead and take a look at why if we head back to essential grid settings and we scroll down we can see max visible rows here is set to three so let's go ahead and bump this number up to six and then we'll get all of our grid items and this is the cool columns pattern that we set up so our first item spans across two columns our second item spans across one column and two rows and the next set of items are just uh, one column one row and we end with two columns and one row so it's just kind of a really cool way to get an interesting look for your grid so let's head back and set cobbles pattern to off and head back to grid layout even and we'll set items ratio back to four by three so for the main layout a boxed option will mean that the grid will always fit inside the pages content area but if we had a special theme let's say where we wanted the grid to span across the entire width of the page we could choose full width and this isn't really that great for this particular theme but if you had a theme that had a full width view it would be pretty cool and the last option would be full screen in case you wanted the grid to resize itself to fill the entire visible screen and that would also depend on the theme that you're using so another thing that we can do to affect the layout is if we scroll down you can see here it says paddings whole grid padding let's say we wanted to enter 50 pixels of padding across the entire grid we can see that that padding would be applied to our grids content area and now our grid would appear smaller so let's go ahead and change the background color of the grid so we can really get an idea of that padding taking effect so if we head over to skins and we change main background color from white to or transparent to let's say gray now we can see that this area here is technically reserved for our grid but the 50 pixels of padding that we entered is now shown and in the first video we discussed the item spacing which gives us this 10 pixel spacing between the items and we could go ahead and adjust that as well let's say we want to change it back down to zero and now we don't have any item spacing so that's a quick overview of some of the layout options for essential grid thanks for watching